66 million years ago, on a now non-existent island in what is today Romania, an animal lived that was unlike any other. This giant Azdarchid, standing as tall as a giraffe, with a robust skeleton and a huge beak for snatching prey from the ground, was Hatsogopteryx tambema. Nothing remotely like it exists today, and nothing remotely like it has existed since the late Cretaceous period in which it lived. Stalking on the ground and picking off sauropods, yes, sauropods, from the open floodplains and woodlands in which it lived, this animal was a true force to be reckoned with amidst the prehistoric world. Today, we will be going into detail on exactly how this animal lived and hunted in the bizarre world of Hateg Island. Here, nothing was as it seemed. Gigantic pterosaurs hunted dwarf titanosaur sauropods on an island where death from above was a constant threat. Let's take to the skies to meet the heaviest flying animal that ever lived, Hatsogopteryx tambema. This wandering giant, equally at home soaring through prehistoric skies as it was striding across the mist-shrouded plains of ancient Hattig, belonged to a group known as the Ajdarchids. Ajdarchids were, without rival, the largest creatures ever to master flight, an extraordinary family of pterosaurs that includes big names such as Quetzalcoatlus and Aramburgiania, the former being the single largest animal ever to fly. Though Hatsogopteryx may not have quite matched Quetzalcoatlus in sheer wingspan, it was still an animal of a staggering size, stretching between 10 and 12 meters from wingtip to wingtip, and standing around four and a half meters tall when grounded. Like most pterosaurs, it would have appeared very unfamiliar to modern eyes, moving on elongated, pillar-like forelimbs, its enormous head perched high atop a long, flexible neck. This strange appearance would have in part resembled a giraffe with wings, given the long neck and slender limbs, although one that was capable of consuming dinosaurs in one gulp with its huge beak. The skull, and therefore head, was among Hatsogopteryx's most imposing features, estimated to exceed two and a half meters from the base of the neck to the point of its formidable beak. Unlike the lighter skulls of smaller pterosaurs, Hatsogopteryx had a reinforced heavy-set cranium, one that required significant muscle to support. The bones of the skull bear evidence of this. Thickened ridges are present where powerful muscles would have anchored, enabling the pterosaur to bear the mighty weight of its own head while stalking across the landscape. In addition, the jaw joint shows grooves that suggest it could open its mouth remarkably wide, ideal for catching and consuming large prey items such as dinosaurs. Although we only have partial fossils of Hatsogopteryx, paleontologists have pieced together a reliable picture of its anatomy by comparing what is known with the complete skeletons of other closely related pterosaurs. A good example lies in the fragmentarily preserved neck vertebra, which measure just over nine inches in length. Based on comparisons with other species, scientists estimate that the complete bone would have measured about 12 inches, with larger neck bones potentially stretching up to 16 inches. These estimations have helped reconstruct the likely size and proportions of the animal's neck and overall body, painting a portrait of a giant. While a complete skull has yet to be uncovered, its partial remains hint at the presence of a crest, perhaps similar to that of Quetzalcoatlus. If it had one, this crest may have been visually striking, possibly brightly colored to contrast with the earthier tones, browns, grays, and blacks, that may have covered most of its body. However, without preserved pigment, any speculation about its coloration remains just that, speculation. What we do know is that Hatsogopteryx, like many pterosaurs, would almost certainly have been coated in pycna fibers, fuzzy filamentous coverings found across the head, body, and neck. These structures weren't quite feathers, nor were they hair, but shared qualities of both. 
offering insulation and potentially playing a role in visual communication. Pycna fibers evolved independently from feathers and fur, a prehistoric example of convergent evolution in mammals and archosaurs. Hatsogopteryx's mighty fossils were first unearthed in the late 1970s during a student-led excavation in the Densus Kyula Formation. The dig took place near the village of Rachitova, Romania, one of several small communities nestled within Transylvania's Hateg Basin, once the site of the long-lost island in the late Cretaceous. The rock layers here belong to the Maastrichtian stage, the final chapter of the Mesozoic era, just before the extinction event that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs, flying pterosaurs and giant marine reptiles. This places Hatsogopteryx among the very last of its kind, soaring over ancient Europe in the final moments before the Chicxulub impact struck Earth some 66 million years ago. Students combing through the Maastrichtian deposits of ancient Hateg were astonished to uncover a scattering of strange bone fragments. The remains suggested a pterosaur with proportions rivaling the legendary Quetzalcoatlus of North America, an enormous animal with a towering wingspan and colossal frame. The fossils themselves were fragmentary, just two sections from the rear of the skull and a badly distorted piece of the left humerus. At first, it wasn't even clear that these bones belonged to a pterosaur. The fragments were initially mistaken for the remains of a large theropod dinosaur, an understandable error given the size and condition of the material. It wasn't until 2002 that a clearer picture emerged, when paleontologists Eric Buffertot, Dan Grigorescu and Zoltan Chiki re-examined the find. Their work confirmed that these fossils belonged not to a large dinosaur, but to a truly massive flying reptile an Ajdarkid pterosaur. The newly identified species was given the name Hatsogopteryx tambema. This comes from the Greek for terror wing from Hateg, a fitting title for one of the largest aerial predators ever known. The Densus Kyola formation is just one of several fossiliferous sites scattered across what used to be the ancient Hateg island, and over time, Additional remains of Hatsogopteryx have been unearthed from elsewhere in the region. Notably, bones attributed to the species have also been recovered from the San Petru Formation and the Sebes Formation, each contributing new pieces to the puzzle. These finds have included parts of the shoulder blade, jawbone, neck vertebrae and various limb elements, although the animal's skeleton remains far from complete. Still, even with a fragmentary record, Paleontologists have managed to deduce a great deal about this giant. Its sheer size, combined with its role as an apex predator of late Cretaceous Europe, has captured public fascination, and Hatsogopteryx has since become one of the most iconic pterosaurs to appear in documentaries, books, and popular media. One of the key traits that set Hatsogopteryx apart from its fellow Ajdarshids was its build. Unlike the tall, slender frames of its giant relatives, Aramburgiania and Quetzalcoatlus, Hatsogopteryx was notably stockier, its body structure denser and more reinforced. Its vertebrae were thick-walled and heavily built, with prominent muscle attachment points across the preserved fossils. This suggests that Hatsogopteryx was a powerful animal, likely capable of lifting and transporting substantial prey, perhaps carrying victims back to a nest or favored hunting spot amidst the plains or woods of Hayteg. The neck, while long, was surprisingly strong and flexible, more so than Quetzalcoatlus. Specific skeletal adaptations, such as enlarged articular joints and compact load-bearing vertebrae, helped to minimize strain on the musculature when the animal carried heavy loads. Further clues lie in the muscle scars found on the neck and skull bones, signs of repeated, forceful use. Altogether, this anatomy paints a clear picture. Hatsogopteryx wasn't just large, it was strong, 
especially for a flying animal. Unlike smaller pterosaurs, which often captured fish, insects, or tiny vertebrates mid-flight, Hatsagopteryx would have hunted on foot, stalking through the open plains in search of prey. It's thought to have used its wings to launch into the air and then glide or descend strategically, using the element of surprise to approach its victims from above. Once within striking distance, it would have used its massive bladed beak to grab hold of its prey, likely small dinosaurs, and lift them clean off the ground. Smaller animals may have been swallowed whole using the classic throwback and gulp technique seen in modern day birds like storks. Larger prey, too big to consume in a single bite, were probably dispatched through more violent means, grasped in the beak and slammed against the ground until they lay motionless. This brutal feeding strategy may sound extreme, but it's supported by biomechanical evidence and it fits with what we know of Hatsagopteryx's immense physical strength and unique adaptations. Hatsagopteryx, when hunting, was likely best suited to open terrain. The densely packed trees of Haseg's forests would have posed a challenge for such a large terrestrial predator while searching for food, limiting movement, visibility, and flight options. For that reason, it's believed Hatsagopteryx preferred to stalk the island's floodplains, meadows, and wide valleys, ideal terrain for ambush, aerial descent, and precision hunting. It may have vanished into the tree line to rest or lay eggs when the time came. Hayteg Island was a rich, varied landscape of wooded terrain and open plains, spanning roughly 31,000 square miles across, an area comparable to modern-day Ireland. During the Maastrichtian stage of the late Cretaceous, it formed part of a sprawling island chain situated along what would eventually become the boundary between Eastern Europe and Western Asia. This isolated environment gave rise to a host of unique creatures, many of which evolved along very different paths from their mainland relatives. Over time, Hattig's creatures were subject to a phenomenon known as island syndrome, an umbrella term used to describe the evolutionary effects of offshore isolation, which often results in either insular dwarfism or insular gigantism. These adaptations can lead to dramatic shifts in body size, physiology, and behavior when animals evolve in isolation. Modern analogues include Madagascar, the only place in the world where lemurs can be found, and Australia, where large marsupials have been able to emerge as the major group of land mammals. Hatsagopteryx benefited from insular gigantism, growing to an enormous size in a landscape with relatively little predatory competition, while Magyarosaurus, a close relative of the colossal mainland titanosaurs and a key prey item, was drastically miniaturized on Hateg, reaching sizes far smaller than its gigantic cousins. The ecosystem that Hatsagopteryx ruled over was full of similarly unusual species. It shared Hateg's skies with other smaller Asdarchids, such as Eurasdarcho, as well as with still undescribed species of pteranodontid pterosaurs. On land, the agile and enigmatic Balor Bondok patrolled the undergrowth, an animal debated by paleontologists as either a basal bird or a derived dromaeosaur, and one that may even have been herbivorous. Notably, no large carnivorous theropods appear to have inhabited Hateg, leaving Hatsagopteryx to dominate as the island's apex predator. Had they existed here, Hatsagopteryx probably would not have evolved to the size and status it did. The herbivorous dinosaur population was made up of dwarf sauropods like Magyarosaurus and Paludititan, along with small agile ornithopods such as Zalmoxes that darted in and out of the undergrowth. The island's waterways were home to diminutive crocodilians like Doratodon, which coexisted with a variety of snakes and amphibians. All of these creatures would have lived under the looming shadow of Hatsagopteryx, a predator likely to have been an opportunistic feeder, 
With its immense size, powerful build, and formidable jaws, it would have preyed on whatever it could catch, be that dinosaurs, reptiles, mammals, or amphibians. In the absence of large predatory dinosaurs, Hatsogopteryx sat unchallenged at the top of Hatteg's food chain, ruling over one of the most extraordinary and isolated ecosystems in the late Cretaceous world. Hatsogopteryx is without a doubt one of the most extraordinary animals ever to have lived, an apex predator in a land where evolution was left to run wild. Towering above the strange world of Hatteg Island, it was capable of both immense strength and frightening precision. While its remains are still fragmentary, new discoveries continue to reveal just how unique this pterosaur truly was. As the curtain fell on the Cretaceous, Hatsogopteryx would have been among the final apex predators of this now dying world. Its legacy, however, is as colossal as it was in life, and with any luck will continue to grow long into the future as scientists are able to learn more about it.